Oh. 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 Can someone put the gravity back on? Yeah, now. Oh. Oh. Hi, and welcome back to Star Rapid, the company that does serious engineering for serious engineers. Serious engineering. In this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. We want to explore strange new worlds to seek out new life and new civilizations to appreciate the fact that a lot of engineers like me were first inspired by an early love for science fiction, fantasy and other imaginary worlds filled with cool gadgets and amazing inventions. And no influence was bigger than Star Trek, which came on air in 1966 and brought with it a wealth of fresh design ideas that anticipated many of the devices that are now part of everyday lives. So, in honor of the show, let's take a closer look at five cool inventions that got their start in the past, or was it in the future, of Star Trek. Live long and prosper. Interactive displays. In 1966, a TV was a giant cathode ray tube with crappy picture quality, poor reception, and a distorted curved glass screen weighing, I don't know, five million metric tons or something. Ah, those were the days. Buck Rogers, now adventuring in the amazing world of the 20th century. But aboard the Enterprise, they had flat screen monitors everywhere. They were full color, portable, and two-way interactive, ushering in a concept of telepresence and thus teleconferencing like we do with our computers every day. Thanks a lot, Zoom. Curiously, the most advanced monitors today are going back to being curved, but now they're concave rather than convex, bringing more information into focus around the viewer's range of vision. Communicators. More than just walkie-talkies, Star Trek communicators combined a flip-up microphone, speaker arrangement, volume controls, tuner, and crucially, GPS tracking, so that the crew could home in on distress calls. Real GPS for civilian use didn't become fully operational until 1995. Based on the Star Trek design, engineers at Motorola were inspired to create the first portable cell phone in the 1970s, the Dynatac winning the race against Bell Labs. But the Dynatac was still huge and unwieldy. It wasn't until 1996 that Motorola came out with the StarTac, the first true clamshell style phone that you could fit in a trouser ticket pocket. I saw one of these early versions in Scotland in 1995 when I was helping to develop the first prototypes. And by the way, Kirk never said, beam me up Scotty on his communicator or anywhere else. Fake news. You are fake news. 3D printing. Okay, there were earlier shows that had amazing whiz-bang machines which materialized something from thin air. But on Star Trek, the technology had a real underlying logic. First, you take computer-encoded data, typically on a portable SD card that you put into a slot, no less, combine it with nutritious protein raw material, and voila, out comes a steaming plate of Futuro food, courtesy of 3D printing magic. I, for one, could use a good non-reconstituted meal. Doctor, <laughs> you are a sensualist. Personal Digital Assistant, or PDA. The tricorder was awesome. This little bit of tech was carried by the crew on many missions and gave them invaluable information about the location of approaching enemies, the condition of a sick patient, or how breathable the atmosphere was on a strange planet. In other words, a personal digital assistant or PDA, or portable computer with sensors and cameras and a library of information that could be carried around everywhere. This concept would later be expanded upon in the next generation with the PAD, P-A-D-D, or Personal Access Display Device. Automatic doors. Fooled you, didn't I? You thought I was going to say Electroplasma Turbo Blaster Phaser Array, didn't you? No? Okay. In 1966, automatic doors only existed using pressure-sensitive floor mats. But wireless proximity door sensors wouldn't be invented until the 1970s. On the Enterprise, doors swooshed open and closed when you approached them, making life all the more convenient and, dare we say, hygienic. So that's all the time we have for today. Got a favorite that we missed? Drop us a line in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe using this magic button 
over here or there somewhere. Next time, we'll have even more in part two of Star Trek Inventions. Remember, we're the people who bring you serious engineering for serious engineers. Serious engineering. Side effects may include memorizing that one episode from Breaking Bad where Badger is telling Skinny about his Star Trek script that has a blueberry pie eating contest featuring Chekhov versus Spock that ends very badly indeed for one of them and you're just going to have to look it up to see what happens. Nothing's going on, neutral zone is quiet, the crew is bored, so they put on a pie eating contest. The whole crew's in the galley, they're eating Tullaberry pies. Tullaberry? Tullaberries. From Gamma Quadrant, yeah. That's Voyager, dude. Okay, blueberries then. They're eating blueberry pies Better. as fast as the replicator can churn them out. Finally, it's down to just three. Kirk, Spock, and Chekhov. Kind of changed the laws of physics.